Hello everybody and welcome back. In this lecture we're going to learn about positioning a camera in our scene so that we can render out a final image and upload it to share with everybody. So how do we go ahead and do this? Well first of all we need a camera in our scene and I'm not sure we actually have a camera in this scene. If I go up to render and render an image, yeah no camera found in scene. You may have deleted your camera. You may actually have something appearing at this moment in time. Let's go ahead and add a camera into the scene. And it will appear where the 3D cursor is. And then if I go ahead and render image, there we go. We're getting something at least. Now we will be rendering using the EV rendering engine by default. And in the subsequent lectures from here, we'll actually look in depth at both Cycles and Eevee and just go through a couple of the settings that really improve your final render. And in the lectures after this one, we'll look specifically at Eevee, then Cycles, and then something called Workbench, just so you have a fundamental foundation of knowledge with the different rendering engines and some optimizations so you can actually render out as quickly as possible without too much quality loss. Let's click the cross at the top here and get rid of that. We've got a camera down here. Let's press the number pad zero to see what it's looking at. And lo and behold, that looks like what we saw before. Now there are a couple of ways of shifting the camera around. With the camera selected, we can use our good old transforms here. I can move it on the X axis, the Y axis and the Z. And you can probably see, yes, you can frame things like this but it's quite a bit of backwards and forwards to try and get the uh, pyramid in frame here. Now if we go ahead and go render, render image, yes. So we're definitely looking at that. And looking at this, I definitely need a bit more light on my Mayan pyramid. I'll play with that towards the end. Okay, let's close that down. Another way you can manipulate the view that the camera can see is make sure you're looking through the camera Go to the View tab of the Properties panel. If you've not got that open, press N to make it appear. Look at this. Screencast keys have turned themselves off. Let's turn those back on. And here we have a View Lock. And underneath that, we have Camera to View. I dislike this because I always forget. And when I then use the middle mouse button, I'm moving my camera around. But some people do like it. And it enables you to move the camera around by holding down the middle mouse button or holding down shift and panning around. And there we go, I've managed to jump over here. We can zoom in, zoom out. You can run out of zoom with this. You can, can get stuck and not able to zoom back in. And I generally don't like it as it doesn't give me the freedom that the final option I'm gonna show you is. So I'm gonna turn off camera to view so I can come out of that view very easily with the middle mouse button and just start looking around. Now, if I use the shift key and the tilde key, we enter first person mode. We looked at this earlier on. And in fact, now we've got some objects in our scene, we can actually press tab and walk around our scene, which is pretty awesome. So if you're making game assets or anything along those lines, you can see roughly what it would look like in a game. Let's see if I can walk up these steps. Oh, a bit jerky, but there is Suzanne, all worship. Okay, so, oh, I've fallen off. Fortunately, there's no full damage, but I want to see what the camera is seeing. So first of all, let's press escape and come out of that and switch to the camera's view. We can do that with the number pad zero. We can go to view, viewpoint, camera. You can also click the camera icon on the side here. I will use a variation, but usually it's the number pad zero. Now that I'm in this view, I can press shift and the tilde key and that first person mode comes back, but this time I'm controlling the camera. So I can place it here. Press F12, we got ourselves a render. And when you're happy with a render, you can go ahead, go to image, save, and save that image. In this case, it's gonna save by default as a PNG. If you didn't want that and you wanted it to be a JPEG, we can go to the top right of this window and change PNG to any one of these other file formats. Each one of these has a specific use case. Most of the time though, you're probably going to be outputting as a PNG or a JPEG. And then you can go ahead and click save as image. And that's now on my hard drive. 
and I can go ahead, select castle, and there it is. It's a file on my computer that I can upload and share to anybody. So now you've got a new tool for sharing your work, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you've created. Let's close that down for the moment and have a look around our scene. Now I did say that I wanted some extra lighting on my pyramid and what I'm going to do to do that really quickly is I'm going to look from the top and I'm going to select my two area lights that I had before and I'm just going to duplicate them, move them over here and scale them up and probably move them apart. Now that would have been better if the pivot point was set to uh, the median, so then they'd be scaling away from each other. And instead of this green, I'm gonna go for the orange again that we talked about earlier. This is a much larger object, so I'm gonna pull the light back ever so slightly, but turn up the power. I'm gonna go for 2000 initially, maybe even higher because I think we need more power. There we go. I'm gonna change this to a blue, and once again, maybe 5000. There's no set rules on these numbers. In this particular case, it's just a matter of setting it up and seeing how it looks. I think I'm going to go for a brighter orange, something along those lines. And again, you can come in to your heart's content and tweak lighting. And I don't have a sun lamp in my scene at the moment. I'm not going to add one in at the moment either because it will dramatically change the lighting that I've already got. Okay, let's have a look and see what this looks like when I render it. That looks a lot better. Blue and orange, always a good color combination. Now, when we're rendering things out, say I wanted to render a few different views out and store them and then pick from them. At the top here, we have slot one. If we click on that drop down, we can see a series of slots. Now I find this really useful. You can use the numbers at the top of your keyboard to render into different slots. You just need to remember to change it to that slot first. So if I press two and then close that down, look through the camera, Go shift and tilde and move around and let's just have a shot from this side. Press F12. We now have that second shot in slot two. I can go back to slot one and we can see the other one. So this is a great way of comparing renders and especially so when it comes to tweaking settings to get a better cycles render or especially when it comes to tweaking settings when you're altering your render settings to see what the impact was prior. Okay, let's go ahead and I, I want to save that. I like this angle, so I'm going to go save as and I'm going to call this one Mayan for the moment. It's not remembered that before I wanted a JPEG, so I'm going to change that back to JPEG now and save as image. So now I have two images on my hard drive that I can upload and share. Let's close that down. And there we go. We've played with the camera, we've moved it around, we've set it up, and we're able to frame our objects how we want. Now there's loads more to learn about the camera, loads more to learn about everything that we've touched so far. But we'll leave the camera there for the moment, and in the following lectures, we'll play with the different render engines and see what the results of those would be. If you've done any test renders, show them off right now. Go over to the Discord and paste in your pyramids, your your pyramids, your castles, whatever you've happened to have made. I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And if you have done any renders so far, please do go ahead and share them, either over on the Facebook group or on Discord. Just paste them in and say, look what I've managed to do. I'd be so pleased to see your progress so far. So that's it for this lecture, and I'll see you all in the next one.